Whew. All right. How's it going, y'all? This is Jeremy I'm coming to you live from my living room. And here we're going to talk to you today about first aid. So why it's important, what's in the first aid kit, and a little bit of how, how to do it, just ins and outs of a first aid kit. So why is first aid important? Well, when you get down to it, what you learned today in this year's video lecture um, can save a life. It can be, can be your life, it can be your cousin's life, it can be my life. So pay attention because when it's time to save my life, you better know what you're doing, all right? No, I'm just kidding. But um, so I like to think of a first aid kit as a spare tire or a phone charger. Um, it's one of those things that if you have it and you don't need it, you know, it's easy to kind of take for granted, just kind of forget about it. But if you don't have it and you need it, it's the one thing in the world that you wish you had. And uh, it's just one of those things you don't want to regret not having. So uh, make sure you always have a first aid kit on handy, especially um, in, your, in your homes. I, I, know, I know schools and workplaces all have a first aid kit handy. So uh, make sure you're always prepared. So <clears throat> just going, going down the list, um, first aid kit, they, they provide quick medical treatment until professional assistance arrives. So of course, a first aid kit, as, as you know, isn't a substitute for going to the doctor and um, making sure that you're being taken care of. But, you know, just, just moving, just going through life, if you're playing a basketball game and, you know, you, you uh, just fall and skin your knee or, you know, you're cutting vegetables and you accidentally cut yourself. Um, yeah, this is what prevents us from, uh, this is what keeps problems from becoming big problems just down the road. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that more later, but um, it's better to, it's better to have it and um, just take care of it as soon as you can before it becomes a big deal. So uh, provides life-saving help in emergency. Okay, moving on. Um, all right, so anatomy of a basic first aid kit. So uh, as you see here, this is one of, this is a variation of first aid kit. It's, you know, just a really little thing for the essential basics. Um, so this one is a, is a, a really small one with just the essential essentials. So it's just 12 things in there. But the benefit of this is that you can take it anywhere you go. So you can take it with you to school, take it with you to the gym, take it with you to Walgreens on the way to buy more first aid kits. So uh, let's crack it open. So we got some bandages here, bet you didn't see that coming. Um, so bandages are really important for, like I said, if you're um, just living life and you get a cut or something, right? Um, we have some hand sanitizer wipes, so it might not seem like such a big deal, but this is one of those things that, like I said, prevents a problem from becoming a bigger problem because it disinfects wounds. And I'll talk about more about that in a bit. And we have some gauze. So gauze is for uh, some bigger wounds that maybe if a uh, band-aid band uh, won't quite hold back. So uh, let's say, you know, you, you fall in your driveway and you skin your knee, uh, gauze is definitely going to be better for that than just a tiny little band-aid. So um, when you're applying first aid, you want to make sure that, um, first of all, that uh, the wound is clean. So make sure the wound is clean, make sure you stop the bleeding. And uh, as soon as you clean off the wound, just make sure you get any dirt or debris out of there and uh, it stopped bleeding. Then you're ready to apply first aid. So this is when you would apply that uh, sanitizer wipe that we saw earlier. And uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you skin your knee or when you cut yourself, um, it's, the, uh, the actual wound isn't gonna be as big of a deal as if it gets infected. So a first aid kit helps us from you know, uh, making sure that that wound isn't infected. So disinfect the wound so that uh, there's minimal risk of infection because that's just a whole bag of problems you don't want. And, um, and then once you disinfect the wound, apply a bandage. And if, uh, while the wound heals, make sure the site is clean, dry, and intact. So it's in a hospital lingo, it's called CDI, clean, dry, and intact. And if you make sure that a wound, a healing wound is clean and it's dry and it's intact, there's you know, nothing um, aggravating it or anything, that'll give you the best chances for it to heal. So apply first aid, make sure the wound is clean, dry, and intact, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna talk about the first aid triage kits. So these are special because they are um, the standard um, kits for offices, um, and they're standardized by the um, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. So because of them, they make these kits that have the same materials in each box going to offices. Um, so this is just the, um, a, tra a little handbook that helps you um, through different um, injuries and trauma types. So like if you have like a 
stroke or burn wound, it'll help you, it'll guide you through treating that wound with the materials inside of the, um, inside of the kit. So this first thing is a um, cold pack, helps for decreasing swellness, swelling, decreasing swelling and numbness, um, any kind of pain, um, just like used for any kind of trauma wound, like a hit to the arm or something. This is a burn dressing. So it's a wrap that, that's used to help um, decrease like the injury from a burn. Um, there's there's some there's some other stuff in the later that, that will also be used with this, but yeah, this is usually used. But you also need to call um, medical help afterwards because burns are very can be very serious. These are some scissors. They are used to cut open um, clothes and like thick garments, anything that's covering a wound because you know you have to see it to treat it. Up next is some gauze, um, used for bigger wounds, used to stuff um, bleeds. Um, used for like, anything that's like too small, too big for ba for bandages to help. Next, we have some eye wash. So any like anything that gets into your eye, like dirt, debris, like you're outside and it's dusty, this would be helpful so you don't get inf an infection, maybe get a sty or something. You don't want that to happen. Um, next, we have Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is very useful. Um, when helping treat a patient, you, you can't have dirty hands. You don't want to infect the wound or and make it worse. So keeping your hands clean while treating anybody who's undergoing trauma, who has a certain type of trauma is very important. Next, we have some first aid burn cream. So like before we had the um, wrapping, so these can be used in combination with that, um, which just um, helps soothe the pain from the burn and keeps it um, from getting infected as well. Next, we have some antibiotic ointment. Um, serves similar purpose to the um, burn cream. It helps keep the wound clean and prevents anything like that from happening, um, any kind of infection from happening to the wound. Next, we have gloves. Keeping your hands sterile while cleaning a wound is very important. You don't want, you never want to infect the wound. That will just make it worse and cause a bigger problem for the, for the person who's injured. Next. We have some more some more um, antiseptic um, equipment. So this is these are towelettes. Do you just use them to clean off and wipe the um, wounds so they don't get infected? Um, there's a bunch of them, so um, don't go crazy with them. But like you know, make sure the wound is clean. Um, this is a um, CPR aid. It's like a little inflatable bag with a mouthpiece on it. So anybody who you're trying to help breathe, you push in air through this um, aid, and then it helps. It just aids you in um, in CPR efforts. Um, this is an elastic gauze. Um, some some of them have velcro on them, but this one has um, safety pins. You wrap it around, and the safety pins keep it in place. And these are some oval like iPads. They're like bandages for your eyes. You know, if you ever get like um, any kind of trauma wound to the eye, any kind of poke to the eye. You would use these to cover your eye so you can get like an eye patch and see a doctor or something. Um, some some um, first aid tape, very important tape, can help with the ga keep gauze in place, can help with other wounds. Maybe you can close a wound with it. Um, dressing, um, sterile gauze, dressing pads. So you would cover a wound with this and then use the gauze from before and wrap it around to keep the, um, keep the band bandaging in place. And so a lot of Band-Aids here. Um, basic staple of a first aid kit, a lot of band-aids, um, and finally we have the trauma pads. So, so serve a similar purpose to the um, gauze dressing pads. I feel like they're thicker and help for like to protect it from any kind of excess trauma that might happen later on. And there should be another one. And I think that's it for the first aid tr um, triage kit. Again, these are um, will be seen in all your off all offices like. Any and any office setting will have these because they are the standard for um, first aid kits in, in the office. So that's it for first aid triage, triage kits. You can go on to the next slide. I'll talk about um, the first aid kit that I created with things that I found at home. So some things that I included. First, I included some medication. So this one's particular for pain, but include any medication that maybe somebody from your household might need um, in a first aid kit. Next is some hand sanitizer. So it's important to clean your hands before and after helping somebody out just to prevent infections. 
Next is some um, gloves. So it's always important to protect yourself when helping others when you're dealing with like blood or any body fluid. So a pair of gloves is important. Next, we have some tweezers. This can be used like if somebody gets a splinter or something like that, you could use these to help with that. Next is an, a warm hand warm pack. So this one mainly, it's a, you can include it in a first aid kit during the winter. Then you could keep it in your parents' car or your car to help with that. And in the back, it shows you how to activate it um, with the first aid kit. So next we have an elastic bandage. So this one's similar to the one Colin showed, but it doesn't have the safety pins. It has like that Velcro, which makes it a bit easier to wrap around. And next I included a small Ziploc bag with some bandages. It has like different sizes. And if you guys don't have any medical tape, then you could use bandages as an alternative for that. Next it's an ointment and a gel. So this can help with dealing with burns or wounds to help with infections or to help cool the burn down. Those things can help with that. And the last thing that I added is a cold pack. So this is something that you could include in your gym bag, in your backpack, just as you'd never know when you might need it. So yeah, that's the things that I included in my first aid kit with things that I found at home. So for this slide, we just wanted to emphasize the importance of having an emergency contact list. Um, if we think back to uh, the one activity we did in terms of building our own emergency or our own uh, first emergency first aid kits, uh, one of the things that the CDC suggested we that we include in that kit is an emergency contact list. Uh, so as you can see on the left or on the right, uh, you'll have like a list of uh, various essential um, numbers that you might want to have on hand if ever uh, the situation calls for that. Uh, nowadays, your phone has been updated to also include these features. Um, so for an iPhone, you can open up the health app and you'll be able to update your medical ID to include um, any uh, emergency contact. It could be your parents, it could be your siblings, it could be a partner, uh, and so on and so forth. And same thing for an Android. If you open up the settings, you should be able to find the in case of emergency uh, contact. Okay, now we have your COVID care kit essentials. So the, this is like all the things you would need if you or a family member um, got COVID. So first would be a pulse oximeter. Um, there you, they might be hard to find, but if you have one, it's good to, it's good to, it's good to have one. Um, so they measure, pulse, they measure your pulse and they measure the amount of oxygen in your blood. So if you ever see a rise in your pulse while um, the level of oxygen in your blood is low, it could be a sign of you having COVID, you or a loved one having COVID. So you should follow some steps in the later slides. Um, the thermometer, um, if you have a fever, fever is a very common sign of COVID. So if you have a fever, this would be good to, this would be good to have just to know if you had a fever because you can't really tell from your feelings. You know, you have to have like actual proof that you have a fever. Um, Gatorade is very helpful. Um, you might not be the hungriest when you're, um, when you're experiencing um, um, corona symptoms. So this would help you stay from, keep from being dehydrated and also uh, keep your electrolytes up and your electrolytes normal so that you don't get sick or get a different kind of, get different kind of disease from your COVID symptoms. Um, acetaminophen or Tylenol is really good. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so it helps you with pain, um, helps you reduce fever and stuff like that. So it's always good. It helps you get, it can help you break your fever or keep it lower than what it would be if you didn't have it. Um, hand sanitizer is very really, really helpful. Um, just helps lower the spread of it to family members. Um, like while you're quarantining, maybe you you put it on every time you sneeze or cough into your hands, or you can go to the bathroom and wash your hands. But like it, it's all important to keep your hands clean if you have COVID or if a family member has COVID. Um, face mask very important. It just helps um it helps lower the spread between people. It, um, COVID is, uh, corona is usually found on water, on water droplets. So every time you sneeze or cough or like talk, you're spreading these droplets around. So this just helps you, helps keep you, yourself contained while keeping everybody else safe from anything you might release. And disposable gloves, very useful. Keep your hands clean. Um, prevent you, um, prevent you keeping your hands clean with touching surfaces around the house and stuff like that. Um, you don't want to spread it that um, you don't want to spread it through your hands or anything. So this helps just keep 
and contamination between you and your family members um, low. And that's it. All right, so as we see on the map, uh, we have COVID-19 testing sites all throughout Chicago. So there's very likely one near where, where you live. So if you or a loved one are experiencing um, symptoms of uh, shortness of breath or a cough or a fever, and you know these symptoms are um, just affecting your ability to function and, in, in everyday life. So there's no reason not to get tested um, and better be safe than sorry. So um, yeah, if you are experiencing symptoms or know someone who is, uh, go out and get tested. You might save a life. Again, if you think you're experiencing any symptoms or you think you might have um, COVID, you should follow these steps um, on this um, algorithm that's shown here. It's very helpful. If you don't have a doctor you can go to, you can call um, the number below the Find a Health um, Center um, go that gov website that, that you see on this um, sheet. Um, it's just very, it's very useful information and it help, helps you make the right decisions during this time of panic. You don't want to go around, you don't want to go to the straight to the emergency department or do anything reckless um, during these times. So it's just nice to know what you should be doing at certain times, um, depending on your symptoms or lack of symptoms. And to, uh, knowing this, and that's all that we have for you. Um, we hope you enjoy. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Um, so hopefully you learned something, and hopefully you uh, go out and get a first aid kit. So um, thank you so much for listening. We have a survey, and at the end of these slides, um, that you will have received. And if you have anything to say to us, anything that you want to learn, um, any any ways that you would like to. Uh, see these lectures improve, um, feel free to fill out, uh, fill, out, fill out the survey and we look forward to hearing from you. So that's all that we got. You have a nice day.